the year 2019 is almost over. This year was really interesting for me because I spent a lot of time working with thermal typewriters. And I was first introduced to thermal typewriters about a little over a year ago. I think it was back in June of 2018 when Kevin Kittle and I made a trip out to Mesa and Phoenix, Arizona area. And we met up with Ted Monk and Ted showed me his Canon Type Star 4 typewriter and his uh, also his brother EP20, I believe. And that's where I first saw thermal typewriters up close and personal and got interested in them. And since then, I have gathered a few of those in my collection. Some of them I have purchased myself. Some of them I've acquired through the kindness of some of the viewers and um, my friend Kevin also. I got one from him. So I thought uh, it would be an interesting video if we could kind of do a comparison between six different thermal typewriter models. Stay tuned. So back earlier in December of 2019, I started compiling a spreadsheet comparing all the features of the thermal typewriters that I have in my collection. And just so we know what we're talking about, we have the Brother EP20, the Brother EP43, I've had two of those, um, the Canon Type Star 4, the Canon Type Star 5, the Sharp PA1050, and the Casio Writer CW10. And I think between all six of these typewriters, it gives a pretty good uh, overall coverage of the different features. These six particular models representing four different brands, I think, are pretty indicative of the whole model lineup that you can find out there. Well, cheers to the end of 2019. Here is the Brother EP20. Mine came in a dark brown vinyl leatherette kind of carrying case with an accessory pouch. It did come with an AC adapter. The history of these thermal typewriters is still kind of not well documented, but I'm thinking this is one of the very first thermal typewriters ever made. I have seen recently on eBay a Sears brand uh, thermal typewriter that looks almost identical to the EP20, but just branded as Sears with a different model name and pretty much everything else is the same. So when I put together my master spreadsheet, I have a number of different factors that I am comparing the typewriters by. Some of them are subjective, how they f appear or feel to me, and others are more feature-laden la kinds of data points. So subjectively, the layout of the whole typewriter, I would judge on a scale from one to five, where one is the poorest and five is the best, I would rate the EP20 about a three, so middle of the road. Haptics, I believe, also are a three. And it's interesting to say that the haptics on this typewriter are a three, because these keys are very much like a calculator keyboard, but I find myself able to type quite well and accurately with it, surprisingly. So I rated the haptics of the keyboard higher than I initially thought I would after comparing all six of them. But there are no other typewriters that score below three. There are two others that do score a three, which we'll get to later. So haptics are about middle of the road. As far as far as the layout of the LCD display, I find it is quite nice and I'm rating it the highest of any of them actually, a 5. Um, it just, it's not cluttered by any other kinds of display or information or anything like that. And it has 16 characters. The others, besides the Sharp PA 1050, are all 15 character display. As far as the readability, I rate this about a four for the LCD display. Uh, right up there with almost as good as, it's about the same as the Brother EP43 and almost as good as the Casio Writer CW10. As far as the sound it makes when you're typing, I rate it a 4 out of 5, and th that is actually better than two of the other typewriters. And during the carriage return, however, I only rate it as a 2. So it makes most of the noise when it's doing its little carriage return, and that's really the downfall of this machine as far as the sound it makes. But it's certainly not nearly as loud as a manual typewriter or an electronic daisy wheel typewriter, that's for sure. Now, as far as the printing quality, it is dot matrix. As I said earlier, no proportional fonts, no justified modes. And imprint quality is, is, is only a two, right? So because it's a dot matrix display. As far as the intuitiveness of editing, I rate it as a three. It 
shares the same score with the Brother EP43. The other machines are a little bit better as far as editing features, the editing intuitiveness. Um, as far as the memory on this one, it's a 16 character memory, so it has the smallest memory of any of the other typewriters. It does have tab stops, all of them have tabs. It does not have decimal tabs, however. Now, as far as paper handling, there are no carriage knobs. However, the powered buttons that drive the uh, paper up and down, each press of the key will do a half line vertically, and that is a nice feature. And one nice thing about this typewriter, it does have a tear edge, a plastic edge that's sharp enough to tear off a roll of fax paper. Not all the typewriters have that feature, and this has it. So now we get to the issue of size and weight. And what I did is on my spreadsheet, I laid out the size, height, width, depth in millimeters and the weight in grams. And then I scored uh, all six typewriters for both size and weight in a one through six scale, basically ranking them against each other. Uh, as far as the size goes, what I did is I actually added the width, the depth, and the height numbers. I added them together to, to get a sum total, and then whichever one had the smallest total would have the best size score. So certainly this machine scores the best for size in terms of being the smallest. As far as the weight score, this is without batteries. This one also is the lightest typewriter of these six. And there is a cover lid that covers covers the typewriter. Not all the typewriters have that lid feature, and that is a nice feature to have if you're carrying the typewriter around, and it, of course it came with a bag as well. Now it does not have folding rear feet like some of the other typewriters, so it lays rather flat, and that might or might not be an issue with you, and it does have the integral handle, and that's good also. So when I come down to the whole issue of the scoring, for these typewriters. What I did is I totaled all of my subjective scores, haptics, layout, readability, the sound while typing, the sound while doing a carriage return, the imprint quality, the intuitiveness of editing, and the size score and the weight score, and I added all of those up, and then I gave one point for each feature that the typewriter has. So, in this case, the Brother EP20 had a subjective score of 26, and it actually scored second lowest, and the feature score was the lowest. It only had a 9 for a total of 47, and that score ends up being about third of from the lowest. Uh, so it's not the lowest overall performing typewriter. I think this little guy definitely performs well above its weight class. So Okay, the next up on our comparison is going to be the Brother EP43, the bigger brother to the EP20. Um, there was an EP22, and I'm not really sure if there was an, I think there was an EP44 as well. I don't really know about any of the other EP lines, you know, in EP models in the whole lineup though. But the Brother EP43 has a removable lid. It is powered by C cells, four C cells instead of D cells, and of course an AC adapter as well. This typewriter is the second EP43 I've had. I had an issue with the first one, the carriage return mechanism died on it, and subsequently I was gifted this replacement uh, by uh, Gregory Short, and I really appreciate the uh, gift of that, and I was able therefore to spend a little bit more time with two samples of the EP43, so I really feel like I have a good idea of how this machine works and in comparing two different models in terms of variation from unit to unit. The keyboard uh, on the EP43, I rate it at, as a 5 out of 5, and it is right up there with the other 5 scoring thermal typewriter, the Casio writer. This ha does have a really great keyboard, and I think this replacement one I got is actually even better than my original, because I think my original, if I remember, I had an issue with the spring tension in the space bar, and I had to put a makeshift spring in there to kind of fix it, and I was using a ballpoint pin spring, of all things. Uh, anyway, this replacement keyboard doesn't have that issue, and it's just a wonderful keyboard. It really does feel great. As far as the haptics of the keyboard, 
keyboard, it's a five. The layout of the keyboard, it's also a five. Now, one of the things about layout that really matters to me is the shift key. And this typewriter has a great shift key and return key position. You might notice that on the bottom row of keys, there's a nice wide shift key on either side, and then the return key on the right side is above it. This is a great keyboard layout, but this scores a five as far as layout. The backspace is, is up where it should be. The paper up and down buttons are down here where they should be. It's really nice layout. Now, as far as the LCD display, I gave it a four out of five. Not quite as good as the Brother EP20, mainly because this is a 15 character display and the EP20 was a 16 character. And as far as readability, it's a four. It and the EP20 both have a second to the highest readability of the LCD display. And I will mention that they both have the little manual adjustment control to adjust the contrast of the display. As far as the sound while typing, I gave this a three. It's slightly noisier than the EP20 when you're when it's actually printing, but uh, during the carriage return, it's quieter. However, so it's a four for the uh, sound during the carriage return. So if you were to add the subjective scores for the sound it makes while typing and the sound during the carriage return, the EP20 scores a six, this scores a seven. So this is a little bit less loud than the EP20. As far as the printing quality, this has one typeface and it's a Pica 10 typeface. Much, much better than the dot matrix style of the Brother EP20, but again, it's only a single typeface. Does not have proportional font, does not have justified mode, and however, the imprint quality, I would score it as a 4.5 just about as good as the highest scoring machine in this whole comparison, which I won't mention now. Uh, editing. So intuitiveness of editing is a three. It shares the same score with the EP20. It has a very similar kind of editing philosophy as the EP20. As far as the memory, this has a full one line memory when you are in the line by line printing mode, the L slash L printing mode. It'll remember an entire line. You can go back through that entire line with the backspace arrows and edit, insert, uh, delete, and retype over that line before it, it actually does the carriage return and prints. Um, as far as tabs, this does have tab stops, but it does not have decimal tabs. Two of the six machines do have decimal tabs, however, but the brothers don't. As far as the paper handling, there is one carriage return knob on the left side, and it does not have a press in feature, and it is not clicky. It doesn't have a detents for like a ratchet. It's just a continuous motion of the paper. But the powered paper movement keys, the paper up and down, is a one half line per key press. And that is good. That means you can go back up to a previous line, go to the uh, direct print mode and retype over an area that you might've missed, for instance. So that is good. But the carriage return knob is not indexed. It is a continuous slipped kind of, a, of an adjustment. It does have a paper tear edge, and that's another very important feature that I like right up here. It enables you to tear off the thermal fax paper very nicely. As far as the form factor scoring, it does have the cover lid right here that snaps on it. That is a feature score. It did not come with a carrying case. The two that I have never came with a carrying case. And uh, it does not have folding rear feet, but it does have an integral carrying handle like the EP20. As far as the power goes, it is powered by four C cell batteries, not D cells. Now I did not score or any numbers based on whether it's C cells or D cells. Maybe I should have, but certainly the C cell powered machine, which this is the only C cell powered machine of all these six, would be generally speaking, lighter in weight than the others that were taking D cells, but I did not really account for that. It does have an AC adapter, it should at least, my two that I've had came with it, and it does not support internal nickel cadmium battery charging. 
So uh, the size scoring, it scored four out of six. And as far as the weight score, it scored a two. So it's one of the heavier machines. The subjective scoring is 32.5. And actually that's the highest subjective scoring of all of the machines in this comparison. The feature set scoring is a 10. So it is uh, second to the last above the EP20. And it's a total of 48.5. And what that means, it is just below one other machine, which we'll get to shortly. I did not get the Type Star 4 with the hard case, but these oftentimes come with a hard carrying case. The layout of the keyboard, I rate it as a 2. It is the lowest scoring in all the machines, and it shares the low score with the Canon Type Star 5, which we'll get to next. Well, let's see, the left side, you have a nice wide shift key. But on the right side, there's a very small shift key, and then there's a big return key that's kind of vertical shaped, and then there's an empty space uh, above the shift key, which is connected to the return key. And I find myself very often, when I want to shift using my right hand, I oftentimes hit the return key. And that is a no-no with a thermal typewriter, especially if you're in the line-by-line -line printing mode. Because now you just printed only a partial line. And in order to go back and correct that, you're going to have to switch it over to the character-by-character -character printing mode, back up a full space, move over manually, and try to line up where you left off and try to type it again. And it's just a real hassle with a thermal typewriter. So that is a real layout issue. Really, other than that, it's not too bad. It has the... Uh, left and right editing arrows up here in the upper left, the backspace is here. Other than that, it's not bad. The haptics are about a three, so they're like middle of the road. It's about the same kind of haptics overall, I would say, as the Brother EP20. It shares the same score. LCD display, I scored it as a three, and both Canon Type Stars had a three. Uh, so it has a 15 character LCD display, but it has below the characters themselves, it has these little fields that are sort of cryptically telling you the different typing modes and printing modes that you can be in. And instead of having switches, dedicated switches for a lot of this, like the EP20, and it's kind of real cryptic to read and you have to kind of pay attention to it. And then editing those and getting in the right modes, it's kind of, it's one of those read the owner's manual a couple times to figure it out. So readability, um, I gave it a two. It shares the lowest readability score with its companion, the Type Star 5. So both Canons, I don't think the LCD displays are that good. Now, as far as the sound it makes though, consistently, it's a good machine. It scores a four, both while typing and while during the carriage return. In fact, it has the highest score for of sound. So it's, this is a quiet machine. This is for sure a public typing machine. Now, as far as printing quality, and the scoring on that. It has two typefaces. It has a Courier 10, and it has a cubic proportional spaced typeface. And the cubic PS typeface is really nice. It does have proportional font on the cubic typeface, and it has a justified printing mode. One of those confusing little modes that you have to look at is a justified mode, which is nice. In print quality on this particular Type Star 4 is the best of all the machines in my collection. It rates high there. Intuitiveness of editing, it ranks a 4. Okay, as far as the memory goes, this has a single line memory, just like the EP43. Okay, as far as tabs, it has tab stops, of course, but it's only one of two machines in this whole collection that has decimal tabs. So you can line up your decimal point when you have columns of numbers. As far as paper handling, it does have two carriage knobs, of course, one on each side, and the one on the right, you can press and turn it to disable the line space ratcheting. Otherwise, if you don't press it, the, it and the left-hand knob will ratchet half space increments. The Type Star 4 does not have a powered line feed like the other two brothers. Does not have powered up and down. Line feed is strictly by the platen knobs. If you want to maintain your line spacing, you obviously want to click it. Out of these six machines, three of them do not have a paper tear edge that's workable or usable, and especially the two Canon Type Stars. And they've made a point, it seems, of putting these little plastic protrusions 
right above this clear window that has the paper scale on it. So it looks like they're intending for you not to tear paper off because it just rips the paper and keeps you from making a nice clean tear. Doesn't have a paper edge and that's, that's a problem. There is no cover lid for this machine, but of course the case oftentimes come with these and mine didn't. It does have rear folding feet right here that you can flip down and it will elevate the back of the machine up a little bit to give you more of an angled view of the display and have a more ergonomic position of the keyboard otherwise it sits flat and it does not have an integral handle on the back. Power is by four D cell batteries. Mine did come with an AC adapter. It should come with one and it will support internal charging of nickel cadmium batteries, which is a nice feature. Leave your batteries in the machine, plug it in when you're not using it until they charge, you're good to go. Uh, the size scoring, it scores a one. It is the, the largest machine in the collection. And as far as the weight score, it is a four. However, it's not too bad, middle of the road. So subjective scoring is a 27. So it scores just above the brother EP20, but not as high as the EP43. And as far as the feature scoring, it scores a 13 and for a total of 45. And so well, the next machine in our collection is the Canon Type Star 5. And this particular machine actually belonged to Kevin Kittle and he asked me to take a look at it and try to fix a couple problems it had. So it comes with a hard case. I think overall the size of the hard case for the Type Star 5 is smaller than the Type Star 4. I think the machine is a smaller machine. Uh, mine came with a owner's manual that was in Japanese, but there's online PDFs of, of the manuals in English if you need it. It did come with a spare ribbon, a printing ribbon for use on normal paper. And of course the machine itself, this particular one is in the pretty bright, red color. Okay, the Type Star 5 shares a lot of attributes with the Type Star 4. First of all, the layout of the keyboard, it shares the same problem that the Type Star 4 has in terms of the size and shape of the right shift key and the preponderance of size of the return key next to it with this little empty space next to it, which means you're more likely to hit the return instead of a shift, and that's a problem. So I scored it a two for layout. Haptics, however, I actually scored this a little bit better, one point higher for haptics over the Type Star 4. I thought it actually had a nicer feeling keyboard. Uh, the layout of the LCD display, I gave it the same score as the Type Star 4. It's the same kind of display. It's a 15 character LCD display with all the little other notation underneath the letters for your different printing and typing modes. The readability, again, it's the same, it's a two. The sound it makes, the sound during the carriage return, I gave it a four. And while it's typing in the line by line mode, it's a four, which line by line means that it doesn't start typing until you've buffered the 15 characters and then it'll start typing. But if you go into the character by character printing mode, so you, you hit one key, it types the letter immediately, then the next key, and then it types immediately. If you do it that way, it's really noisy. It has this funky little thing where it cycles the print head away from the paper, kind of on every letter. So I gave it a two for that reason, for the, the character by character mode, it's just really noisy. Okay, so for the printing scores, it does have the Courier 10 and the Cubic Proportional. So two different typefaces, proportional font on the Cubic, no justified mode, however, it doesn't do fully justified. So that if you had your choice between a Type Star 4 and a Type Star 5, and if having fully justified text is important to you, I'd go with a Type Star 4 instead. And as far as the imprint quality, this only scored about a three, whereas the Type Star 4 scored a five, the highest score. And maybe it's just this particular sample. As far as intuitiveness of editing, I gave it a four, of course, along with the uh, Type Star 4. 
And it has a one line memory in the line by line mode. You can correct up to that current line you're in. As far as tabs, it has a, a regular tab stops, but no decimal tabs. So again, if decimal tabs are important to you and you want a Canon Type Star, the Type Star 4 might be the better machine. Paper handling, it has two carriage knobs. They are the half line per click variety. And if you push in the right knob, you can disable the line ratcheting. And there is no powered line advance. It's strictly via the knobs. And there is the same problem with the having no functional paper tear edge no cover lid. It does come with a carrying case and it does have the rear folding feet, which is a nice feature for making the, the unit sit up a little bit higher for, so you can see the screen better. No integral handle and powered by four D cells and it does feature internal NICAD charging. Now my particular unit did not come with, a, with its own charger, but I can use the one out of the Type Star 4. So the overall scoring on the Type Star 5, so again, the size score is 3, the weight score is 3, subjective scoring is 24, feature scoring is 1 less than the Type Star 4, it's at 12, and so the total score is a 42, the Type Star 4 had a 45, so again, this is actually ends up being the lowest scoring machine in the whole collection, oddly enough, the Type Star 5, but I sure like that pretty red color. This is an interesting machine, it really is. It has a removable cover for the lower part of the keyboard and LCD display. There are no platen knobs. It has a bigger LCD display than you're used to seeing on the other machines. This piece of tape, by the way, just to remind me that I put fresh batteries in on the 16th of December. The layout of the keyboard, first of all, this is a 3.5 score. Um, it's about middle of the road. It does have nice shift keys on either side of the lower keyboard. The return key is above the right shift and it's nice and big and there's no mistaking hitting it. Uh, they did put the backspace key to the right of the space bar, which is kind of different. It's the brother machines that have a powered line advance, they have those down here where this one, the powered line advance keys are up here. So it just takes some getting used to. But I scored that as a 3.5 for the layout. As far as the haptics of the keyboard itself, I scored it as a three, which is about on par with the Canon Type Star 4 and the brother EP20. So the LCD display on the Sharp typewriter is different from all the other five machines. It has a 40 digit by two line display, meaning that it will display one entire print line as two separate lines, one below each other. So I scored the layout of the display as a four. Pretty good, it's not the five of the Brother EP20 simply because it's a little more cluttered with information. It not only has the two 40 character lines for your text, but it has smaller characters up above that tells you the print mode and the and the typing mode you're in. And then down below, it, it also has a little counter digit that tells you how many characters you have left on that paper line before it's gonna do a carriage return. So readability, I gave it a three. Uh, about middle of the road, not too bad. So the sound it makes, I gave it a score of a three for both the sound it makes while typing and the sound it makes during a carriage return. So overall, it's not bad. It actually is pretty good. Now, as far as the, the printing scores, it has three typefaces. It has a Courier 10, a Courier Italic 10, and a Cubic 12 typeface. And I find myself really liking the Cubic 12 typeface. And it does not have a proportional font, however, but it does have fully justified mode. You can have it fully justified. And I say the imprint quality the scoring is a, a 4.5 on this machine, so it ties it with the Brother EP43, and those two come in second place to the Type Star 4. So intuitiveness of editing is a four, right? It's very similar editing to the other kinds of machines. You can certainly see the entire line that you're currently on and you can move the cursor back and do insertions and deletions and all that. So as far as the memory, on the normal typing mode, it has a, a single line memory, but you can see all the characters of that line in the LCD screen. However, 
It has a separate feature called the text memory. And the text memory is a 6,000 character memory built into the machine. When you get into the text memory, you're like using this like an Alpha Smart Neo. It's simply writing it into the, the memory only. But you can then print out that entire document onto paper, or you can excerpt parts of it to print out, not the whole thing. There was also an expandable memory module. There were RAM modules that you could plug in to expand the memory. 6,000 character memory feature is separate, in a sense, from the printing memory. And I'm going to cover that whole thing in a different video coming up here in the future. It has tab stops, but it also has decimal tabs like the Typestar 4, so that's good. Paper handling, it does not have platen knobs or carriage knobs. It does have a powered line advance. It's a half line at a press. It does have a nice, sharp, crisp tearing edge up here for tearing off your paper neatly. And that is something the Canon Typestars don't have. I like that feature because I use a lot of thermal fax paper. It does have the snap-on cover lid for the keyboard, and it has an integral carrying handle, so you can tote this thing around by itself. Mine did not come with a carrying case, and there are no folding rear feet. It's powered by four D-cell batteries. There is an AC adapter that came with mine, but it does not support internal charging of NICAD batteries. So the total score on this, the size score is a 2, the weight score is a 5, the subjective score is a 28, and the feature score is a 14 for a total of 49. And in fact, this machine scores the highest of all the machines, barely eking out my beloved EP43, believe it or not. Yeah, this has the higher score. I think mostly it's the features. And another thing that might be telling is the fact that I've been using it for my rough draft of my cold hard type story. Well, the last machine in our comparison is the Casio Rider CW10. And like the Canon Type Stars, it comes with a nice plastic rugged carrying case. This one has the owner's manual, it has room for the AC adapter, a couple extra print cartridges, and of course the machine itself. Well, there was a few things that were surprising about this machine when I first got it and tried it. First of all, the keyboard. This scores tops for layout. It has the classic nice wide shift keys to either side of the lower row. The return key is a nice big rectangle right up above it. The backspace is in the upper right corner where I'm used to seeing it on a manual typewriter. Really nice. The haptics of this keyboard. This is the nicest feeling keyboard, I think, of all these. It it's actually scores equal with the Brother EP43. It has a nice travel, nice dampening. It feels really good. The LCD display is another area where this thing scores really high. So the layout of the LCD display I ranked it as a 4, and it is a 15 character display, but it ranks tops as far as readability. It has the largest size characters of any of these displays, so it makes it super readable. Just that alone, the extra large size characters and the really nice keyboard makes this one of the best machines, and I was really wanting it to be the best machine just from those two attributes alone. Except it has some issues. Well, while it's typing, it's not too bad. But during a carriage return, yikes. That thing makes that stutter step thingy at the end of the line when it comes back to the left. It's the worst scoring for sound of all the machines. So that's the one of the things that I was disappointed about in this machine. I was hoping it would score higher because I like the display so much and the keyboard so much. Printing. It has two typefaces. It has a Pica and Elite. There is no proportional fonts. It does have justified mode, however, it'll fully justify the left and right margin. But the in-print quality on this machine, this is another area, and it has to do with this particular machine. It scores a one. It's the worst scoring of all the machines in my collection. And it really has to do with this 
laminated strip that's behind the printhead, that's behind the paper. And on the left side especially, there are some divots in that that just causes uh, parts of the letters are missing. But also, I think one of the digits in the printhead is bad and it just puts a, a white gap down the middle of all the characters. So that's not indicative of the entire model line, but this particular sample that I have, that's the way it is. So I scored it a one, the lowest score for print quality. So the editing intuitiveness is a four, a very similar to the other the others that I've tried. It has a single line correction memory, very similar to the way the others works. As far as tabs, it has tabs, but there's no decimal tabs. This, however, does have a right margin flush feature, this upper left key. None of the other machines that I know of have this in my collection, so that's kind of a neat feature. As far as paper handling, there are no platen knobs. It's a mechanical knob here. And it's continuous, there's no clickiness to it, okay? And that is a huge problem. That's a real problem because that means you can't accurately draw your paper down and go up to a previous line and try to retype some characters that were missing or whatever. It's just a continuous feed on the paper, the manual paper movement and no electronic feed. It does not have a functional paper tearing edge. Just like with the Canon Type Stars, they've put these serrated little plastic nibs sticking up to detract you from making a clean tear of a roll of paper, which is unfortunate. Um, it does not have a cover lid. It, it does have that nice big carrying case, and it does have folding rear feet which I currently have deployed. So it raises the back of the machine up slightly and an integral handle, which is nice. It's powered by four D cell batteries. It does have an AC adapter, which I'm using right now. And it does support internal NICAD charging, which is kind of cool. Well, the total scoring on this machine, uh, size score of five, weight score of one, subjective score of 29, feature score of 11, it comes out with a 46. So it's actually middle of the road, better than you might have thought. The two remarkable attributes are the great feeling keyboard and the really nice big LCD display. Some of the other features about it though detract from its overall score, like the poor design of the line, the manual line advance, not really workable, and this particular machine has a quality issue with the printing. Well, the overall ranking of these machines is that the Sharp PA1050 ranks first and the Brother EP43 ranks second, followed by, surprisingly, the Brother EP20 in third, the Casio Rider in fourth, and the Canon Type Star 4 in fifth, and the Type Star 5 in sixth place. So I think where the Sharp really scores is consistently high in subjective sense of how the keys are and how keyboard is and the display is. It ranks high with that and it has a lot of features also. I think both of those together helps it score high. The uh, Brother EP43 scores even higher than this though on subjective sense, but it falls off on the features. It doesn't have the, nearly the features, but because of its uh, good score in the uh, size category, it really ends up being second place. What's really surprising to me, however, is a little EP20 brother scores in third place because it's really second to last as far as subjective feel uh, and the features it's last place but where it really makes up is in the size and weight category it really is tops and so it comes in third surprisingly and that kind of matches my subjective experience with it is I always enjoy using the little EP20 even though it's just a dot matrix display for the kind of writing you might want to do on thermal paper, the kind of stuff that's going to be transcribed or retyped or edited into some other mode, it's plenty good. Easy to use. So these are the top two machines in my collection. I uh, Up until I got the Sharp, of course, I always figured the EP43 was tops, but I'm going to be playing with the Sharp here as I'm working on my story for Cold Heart Type, the project that's coming up due in April of 2020, uh, the Backspaces project. And hopefully I'll have a story done and accepted. I hope I do. But anyways, well, I hope this comparison was valuable 
valuable to you guys. If you're in the market shopping around for a thermal typewriter, here's six models that I own personally. I've had a, quite a bit of experience with them. This is how they rank. I will uh, leave a link to this spreadsheet that I've been referring to. I'll leave a link down below to that image. And uh, if you have any questions about any of the details of these machines and how they rank and what does it do this or that or whatever, let me know. Drop a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, guys, until next time, happy thermal typing. Stay creative and yes, have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.